Highs today into Nashville versus Atlanta. Where are we going to make our way up to? Nashville is going to be a 71. Atlanta is at 61. Hmm. How exactly does this happen? What separates the two? Yeah. Well, it is called a wedge. Now, this is not a super duper huge classic wedge because we still have cold air in place for like a lot of us. But it's working. But it's enough <laughs> to get temperatures a touch cooler down into mm -hmm. the Atlanta area. Got an east wind right now. We are socked in wind from the east at about 15 miles per hour. And so with that, this lots of cold air in the north. Steph just talked about it. So cold that her computer got frozen. And then some of that gets funneled down here at the side of the Appalachians. It can't go up, so it just gets stuck. And you get stuck in clouds and cool temperatures all down from you know North Carolina, South Carolina, into Georgia. It's so deceiving, though, because Nashville is starting off cold because we have the right. cold air in place. Um, but we're going to get that sun sunshine and everything where this cold air is going to get shoved even deeper into Atlanta. It's interesting because you know, the overall pattern is, is actually a ridge. It's just that we get stuck under it right here yeah. in the southeast. So today, you know, only in the low 60s, Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Greer, up towards Charlotte, um, Greensboro, North Carolina. You guys are all in the same boat. Yeah, but it's cool. You saw this huge warm up right here. Yeah. But remember, the Appalachian Mountains come down to about here. It was able to sneak on the west side. We're on the east side. Mm -hmm. You see Raleigh pushing that stuff into Atlanta. So uh, this is what it's looking at tomorrow. It'll be much warmer and that's really going to be the, the trend. The breaks overnight tonight. Yeah, it does. It's fun when the wedge breaks during the day because all of a sudden it just heats up right, right? real quick. Yeah, that probably won't happen though today. Overnight tonight. And then we're warm. I mean, look at temperatures this weekend, mid to upper 70s. All right, Charlotte, you're going to see the same thing as well. Cold today, but then we are going to uh, warm up. And that's going to be the trend really for everybody here in the, the south. The overall forecast is fairly warm. Today is sort of a one-day thing. Don't worry too much about it. Temperatures are going to be below average, but then soaring back above average. You look though at the month. I mean, we have been below average especially compared to where we're in February yeah. for not just the South, but the Northeast, yeah. the Midwest here, just the topsy-turvy pattern right. out there, right? You get that cumulus congestus and then this cumulonimbus clouds. We had it yesterday. We had a pretty busy day. Actually, there was a funnel cloud around Santa Maria. It was a, it was a busy day, better day today for you, but now everything is shifting east. Active weather in Colorado, in Utah, we got some snow up at elevation. March is your snowiest season, technically in Denver. Now, Denver, you're not going to get it. It will be up in the mountains, but of course, severe weather, part of this as well. Overnight storm possible tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to watch storms continue to roll east, getting into the lower Mississippi Valley by Saturday. Possible severe weather there. To the north, it will be rain and rain spreading into the northeast too. You see New York City, quite a turnaround with our temperatures back to the 60s as opposed to those cold numbers we have this morning. But Sunday, with enough cold air in place, there's a chance we could have some freezing drizzle or some freezing rain. We've got to watch that forecast here changing throughout the day. And then, of course, our next round of severe weather stuff starts Sunday in the plains. Well, we need to talk about the threat of severe weather. We have to be very mindful when that comes around. Mm -hmm. We are running above average here. This is more uh, account that we should be towards April. Yes, so in terms of average. Yeah, the numbers. Uh, 2008 was the last time we were this significantly above average. It's interesting, too, when you look at where severe weather has been. We've had tornadoes in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania. Right, California. Right, but Oklahoma just won. I mean, yeah. so that's interesting. Also, you look at a place like Kansas City. Uh, I know this graphic is a lot, so let's just take a look at it. You go back to 2006 to 2007. That was the last time we had this many tornado warnings. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a very busy start to the year. That's what we want to say about this. 18 tornado warnings are already issued by the Kansas City National Weather Service office um, and we're likely to get more, not necessarily there, but across the plains in the coming days. You know what's so interesting too is that you mentioned Oklahoma has only had one tornado where Kansas City, you know, reports for this whole area that's not far from there right. and they've had a lot of warnings. They've a had lot above of warnings. average warnings. Yes. So, yes. you know, it's interesting. It is interesting. All right, so we've got four different spins that we're going to track in the next week to bring us active weather. There's one that comes through the next two days. There's the next one that that's comes Sunday. in for the end of the weekend. There's the next one that comes in for next week. Yep, I mean, we right are just so week. busy. There's another one going to dive down here in the very active flow. So active jet stream pattern, especially in the southern branch, and that's going to keep us busy with severe weather. Okay, so, you know, tonight you know, I, I still think it's going to be hard to moisture, really get going. Moisture is limited, yeah. um, and it might wait till after sunset. It might be 9, 10 o'clock oh, think storms for sure, yeah. start going. And these will probably be supercell, sort of high base thunderstorms. They might not even bring a lot of rain, yeah. which could be a problem because the fire, fire danger, danger is so high. But, you know, there'll be these little, like, kidney bean-shaped kind of things that pop hail up here and then, you know, wind all the way down into here. Yeah, so I agree. I think this is going to be a much, much later in the day type of a thing starting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our dew points are just there, mm -hmm. and we have this dry line that we think is going to be setting up here. Mm -hmm. And you look for storms to come along mm -hmm. those, and this is why. It's basically a boundary. So a uh, drier air is more dense. It'll allow the warmer air to, uh, to lift, and then eventually, you know, it just sort of breaks through that cap of drier air aloft here. And that's when you get really explosive 
explosive development. It's also how you get that elevated risk with these kind of dry line thunderstorms. Yeah, I mean, you have the winds both coming in like this, too, and so they're going to have to go up. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we anticipate, again, look at the time. So we've got yeah, 9, nine o'clock at night. Yeah, this is 9 o'clock. So we see some storms fire. Again, and you also notice how they're sort of individual cells. That's the type of situation you often get on the dry line. We track it into 11 o'clock tonight. He's watching things sort of sharpen up, too. I mean, when that dry line sharpened up, that's when things wet. But again, you saw the limiting moisture. It's right. not like it held together and everything. So that is one of the problems mm -hmm. that we are dealing with. But as it pushes eastbound, we're going to tap more into that Gulf of Mexico. And that's where the cold front takes over as well. For today, when it, it's really tonight, in fact, more than today. But hail is going to be a risk as well, especially up here in Nebraska and to Kansas, and then a medium risk right down into portions of the Texas Panhandle. Okay, so Friday, it's going to spread out here. But it looks like this is more going to be a squall line because all the winds, if you look at all the different layers, they're all basically going in the same direction direction mm -hmm. and so you can see stronger right. winds and you can't rule out a tornado obviously. We'll probably see a radar that looks something like that and you sort of look along those notches for potential uh, rotation but for the most part it is going to be damaging winds maybe some hail, hail and that yeah. continues into Saturday. We could have one squall line that sets up and we just watch it. Well I mean here's days. the thing the stuff that sets up tonight that might actually kick off some storms and then we might see another mm -hmm. line of storms. Yeah. You know Reynolds we were talking the other day on the show I don't know if people missed it about the outflow boundaries rankings and the scale the northeast snow impact uh, scale ranks high impact weather and they use population, yep. they use area, and they use the amount of snowfall. Okay, so it also looked at the size of the snow field, which for Stella covered most of the northeast quadrant. Now, mm -hmm. the scale, it goes from one to five using a formula that incorporates these ingredients, and mm -hmm. Stella fell well into the category uh, of this. So yeah, here's a there's look a, at our... There's an index, but I think the key is that it includes population, so yeah. it's definitely an impact scale. Most of the bigger impacts, three plus storms, happen in February. Yep. Three have happened in March. Stella will now be another one. It's interesting mm -hmm. that two um, of our top rated storms on the scale have happened in March. We that had doesn't the surprise Blizzard of 93 me, right. and then one back in 1960. Yeah, it, yeah. that does not surprise yeah. me because um, March, you get those big, nice nor'easters yeah. with all that moisture, right? Other storms that have reached Category 3 ratings um, are Kari in 2015, Pax in 2014, and Maximus in 2014 as well. This is the sixth storm to be rated a Category 3 or higher since 2012, one of which was Jonas, was a Category 4. If you remember, uh, mm -hmm. that was a record setter. I remember New York City had, you know, our highest snowfall totals. Yes, and, and Big impact, too, an aerial impact. So you look at Stella, why does it get this Category 3 rating? You look at all of the one-foot-plus snowfall reports that came in. We had 663 reports of over a foot of snow. And you just mm -hmm. look at the aerial coverage. You can actually see that when you compare the before and after satellite. Right, so here's the satellite. And by the way, a lot of this actually is cloud cover that you're seeing here. These are clouds. Right. Um, just to point it out to you, because I know, especially, listen, you still got that gunk in your eye you're trying to, like, <laughs> peel out, uh, let alone trying to decipher what the satellite is showing us. This is all snow. We're just is standing that is cloud That's cover cool. this is snow all the way down across western maryland baltimore so big impact big area coverage a lot yeah. of population affected by stella category three on the nessa scale which is also how by the way we name storms you know we use it's, a scale. it's, it's, yeah. it's very mm -hmm. uh, similar rentals with you know this population size mm -hmm. and the type of impact rolling yeah there you at go. that time i mean all of that that is your lucky day fantastic all right so let's take you uh not to alaska but we are going to talk about some cold weather and some winter weather of course the cold you know it is here in the northeast we feel it this morning with this high pressure right overhead this is an Arctic high, and it definitely has brought in some Arctic air. It's dry, it's cold, but what happens when our next system comes in? That's what we got to talk about, because will it warm up in time? Not yet. We've got temperatures right now sitting at 4 in Burlington, 3 in Caribou, 12 in Syracuse. Lots of cold, dry air in place. So when our next system uh, starts moving in, and it's a very big system, we're going to see the warm front actually stretch all throughout the Midwest and get into the Northeast. It'll start warming up our temperatures, but it will also interrupt interact with some of that cooler air that gets stuck gets uh, stuck in there and bring the chance for some wintry weather. So here's how it plays out. This is today. Here's our low pressure that's going to be forming here on the lee side of the Rockies. Watch this front as it waves in. Again, warming up temperatures right through the Great Lakes. It will help to warm up temperatures in the Ohio Valley. Not quite yet today in the Northeast, simply because the high pressure just remains in control. So when this comes in here, it's a shallow, cold uh, air mass that will be in place right here. So warm air starts overrunning that, and that brings us the concern for some mixed precip, some sleep some freezing rain is all possible as we get you into Friday. So here, let's time that out. This is overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. And now we're watching places like Binghamton and Syracuse down towards State College. Remember, it's cold near the surface, but we've got warm air that's going to be moving up with that warm front over top of that. That's a recipe for freezing rain or sleet. Uh, farther north where there's enough 
cold air at all layers, we will see the chance for snow continuing and it could add up. I mean, places in Vermont, New Hampshire, the ski resorts could be looking at some significant snow, five to eight inches on top of uh, what you have on the ground still, but then warming up after that. So here's the snowfall forecast for us into the northeast. Again, five to eight in the mountains here, the greens, perhaps the whites could get some additional snow as well, three to five inches. In Maine, on top of the four we just got yesterday from our system, we'll add another three to five inches of snowfall. But again, it's all linked. So Binghamton, New York, we've got that warm air overriding the cold air at the surface. That's why we got freezing rain in place. We still have a snowpack as well. But by the time we get into tomorrow afternoon, temperatures warm up enough at all layers that we get some rain. Now this is connected back to our system in the Rockies. So we're going to track this already starting right now with some snow in the Wasatch. You got to go up at elevation. Salt Lake City still rain. And this is going to be a big elevation event. But with our lee side low that's going to be developing right here in Colorado, this is a classic situation to get some snow for the Colorado Colorado Rockies. March is typically our snowiest month and we'll see that snow continuing to fall through today, especially this afternoon into the evening into tomorrow and places like Denver. You might not get much, but in the mountains you get a lot and Steph, it's an interesting situation with the wind direction. It's south of Denver right along the Palmer yep. Divide that gets all the snow right in between.